I was born on the 30th of May, 1921. My father was on the run from the British. My mother would write every day to him, and he would write to her every day. And their letters were absolutely poetic. I felt impelled to drop in on you several times, but I was so quite comfortably occupied all day that I had overcome the temptation. Cycling along this evening, the problem of the name first came on me and it boiled down to this. The child should be called Elizabeth. To my dearest, just a line from myself and Elizabeth who's howling here beside me. She's a real Mulcahy. You can assure yourself I'm quite happy and will make up for your absence now when I do meet you. Heaps of kisses and love from your own Min. He was going to do medicine, but then he got into the movement. And then uh, he got very involved and he was, he and Michael Collins were, worked together, very much so. And so he was in politics all the time. He was very much on the run for years from the British and spent his time in and out of safe houses. Uh, he still managed to marry my mother and have a few children. My mother was, um, I suppose a remarkable woman in many ways. She was very well known politically. Uh, she visited the um, GPO every day up to Thursday of the week when they began to shell the building. So she was an active uh, with her younger sister Phyllis, who subsequently married Sean T. O'Kelly. Uh, they were involved as um, messengers between the outside world and the GPO at the time. They had a wonderful time, life in a way. All their men were sort of patriots and poets and you name it. She was Sean McDermott's girlfriend and definitely uh, before he was shot, she went to see him. He said that he always thought that she would be his wife. But anyway, he was one of the patriots who were shot in 1916, yeah. But then she met my father and she married him in 1919. We had relations on the opposite side, which was very sad for my parents and my mother especially, because her brothers and sisters were all anti-treaty. All my father's companions in the Civil War, no matter which side they were on, they never spoke to their children about it. Too tragic a story. In uh, 1922, shortly after Collins was killed, they moved my father up as the head of the army to be close to Portobello Barracks where the um, whole organisation planned to deal with the Civil War was held. It was uh, an idyllic life. Uh, we never really moved out of Lissenfield much. I was the last of six, and I, my two closest were Nellie and Maura, the girls. Then there was a gap of a year, and then we had restored Elizabeth and Pawthick. We all, we all went to an Irish-speaking national school in Malva Street. Actually, my father was a minister for education when the school was built. So he opened a school. So, of course, naturally we got into it. Dear Mammy, Sean started school on Monday. He likes it very well. I went up to the school with him on Monday and we knocked at the door. A girl answered it and brought us into the hall. In a couple of minutes, Brother Burke came and said, How did you get in here? It is only people with privileges that get in here. And I told him that General Mulcahy sent me down with Sean, and he was very surprised. And he said, Didn't you hear me say that it's a great privilege for anyone to get in here? And he shook hands and brought us into a room. I hope you have a great holiday. Your affectionate daughter, Elizabeth. Uh, uh, Nellie was my sister and she was uh, fashion 
art uh, designer, uh, very famous for Irish tweeds and Irish linen and all that sort of stuff. The Sneddy's fashion shows all were done in Lissenfield and they were fantastic. At one of these shows I saw a figure coming down the stairs, a model figure coming down the stairs. And I thought that was something I'd like to be involved with. And I did, and it was Rosemary. She was modeling for Nelly, and uh, we met up and we married, and she became a a student and a scholar and an international scholar and all that. So that is a great bit of fortune. But I can see that staircase still. My father's father, he decided that his daughters would all go to university. And they were all sent to university not the men, there were three men, including my father. Uh, the men could look after themselves, but he felt women should be educated. And the very same thing happened with my m mother's parents. They s sent all the girls to university. Uh, now, some of them didn't want to go, but my mother and four other aunts went to university. I had four years in a university. It was a wonderful life because the college was very small and you knew everybody and every faculty. Like there was anyone worth knowing you knew. And uh, your life was business studying and then mostly dancing and camogie. And you spent your life doing. When I was finished university, there were, it was, there was a worse recession than now because you didn't have uh, all the social help that there is, such as it is. Anyway, I eventually got a job in Bird's Jelly Deluxe as the chemist to check the jellies. I was there for a couple of years, but I was sent over to Birmingham to the Bird's parent company for training for two weeks. And I flew over in a tiny little blackout plane. This was during the war. And over I went to Birmingham. And they were not a bit friendly, the British, because naturally they were, couldn't believe Ireland didn't go into the war with them. My dearest Mammy, I trust you received my telegram. We left the airport about five minutes past 10. The place was a small squatty little thing, painted gray of course. We were strapped into the seats. There was nothing extraordinary about travelling by air as one could not see. It was a terrible pity. Things are terrible quiet here in Birmingham. There is a blackout which everyone loathes. I'm told that Birmingham is like the back of God's speed at any time, so with the war on you can imagine what it's like. With love, from your loving daughter, Elizabeth. Anyway, I came back and I did my easy stint in birds and then I got a job uh, in food and drugs. My aunt Phyllis ran a laboratory on food and drugs in Dawson Street and I worked there for quite some years until I got married. And I, I got married when I was 28. We used to be married from the church across the road so we'd go by car to the church but we'd walk home Cross and stop all the traffic <laughs> up and down Ratman's Road. And uh, so it, there was always something happening, and especially when none of us left until we got married. So it meant we were there for quite a while, not quite as long as nowadays, but, we're <laughs> but we were there. I was there until I was 28. I married a, a young man called Jerry Burney, who would, who had done dentistry and medicine, but he had to do dentistry as a his profession for, for various reasons. Then we bought this run-down house in Cowper Road, this lovely house. I had three 
amazing daughters and two engineering sons. <laughs> they were very happy years for the whole family. There was so much space, so much space. And like everyone nearly had their own room, which was quite something. So we were there until I was 65 when I left Cowper Road. The Barney family invites you to join us for lunch to celebrate Elizabeth's 90th birthday on Sunday, the 29th of May, 2011. I have an awful lot to be grateful for in my life. And I have been, on the whole, very, very healthy myself. And Jerry lived until he was 80, which really is, is fine, fine. In a way, I perceived her as having problems, the loss of her first baby and all the rest. And uh, I think I've always kept in close touch with her. I thought she was an amazing person in, in the sense of no matter what problems she had, she always maintained a very optimistic and a very happy kind of outlook about life. Uh, faith uh, has been very important for me. Um, it has got me through my life up to now. Now, I'm not saying that I'm 100% believe all the time. Uh, that would be rather extraordinary. But nonetheless, I can't live without having faith and getting through my life. It's just part of me. But I'm still very impressed by a lot of other spiritual outlooks about things. Very impressed. Yes, Elizabeth was, she was graceful and she was thoughtful. Yes, um, a very good elder sister, yes. My friends have been so important. I have really great friends and, and I need friends. I'm a, I'm a sociable creature and I need friends. So, and I've lived that kind of life always. You'd really see her in a, I've never seen her in a bad humor. Um, I mean, age has nothing to do with whether you want to learn any more or not, provided you have a clear mind. Take texting, I just had to learn how to text or I felt I'd be left out, definitely. I'm always curious about uh, everything that's happening around me and I hope I'd keep that up for another couple of years. I think we were, you couldn't describe any of us as being lazy or sitting back and doing nothing. I think the fact that Rosemary died has uh, brought Elizabeth and Richard and me closer together. They're really very attentive. They're, they've been very, very helpful. I often wonder if I came to the gates of heaven and I came across St. Peter, uh, I think I'd say to him, well, I've been trying very hard to get up here. I can't believe I've made it. Anyway, thanks for letting me in. Thank you.